Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. On this episode of Two Opinionated, we're talking with the cast of Resident Alien, and it starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Two Opinionated. I'm a little bit beside myself. Can't believe that uh, we've got this group of people with me. I'm so happy. We've got the cast and creator of Resident Alien. So welcome to all of you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thanks, man. I was going to take time to introduce you individually, but it that'd be the podcast. <laughs> yeah. there, Let's uh, do the main yeah. ones. <laughs> main ones. <laughs> <laughs> well so let me let me start this way uh, chris when when you decided that you wanted to to adapt this comic you know what was that process like you know why this comic and was it was it difficult making that adaption you know it's not always easy to we see a lot of comic adaptions they're not always done well you know what uh, what made you choose this one yeah i had been uh uh, working with Amblin, Amblin uh, Television a little bit, they had sent me some stuff. I was trying to break out of half-hour comedy and go into something more hour-long dramatic. Uh, and so I was working with Amblin. Amblin actually sent me the comics, uh, the Dark Horse comics of Resident Alien, as you know, something would you be considered? Uh, would you consider doing this? And they had sent me some things before, and I looked at it, and I wasn't really taken by it. But there was something about these comics. I, I've always been sort of an alien geek, but also the thought of being able to sort of tell a story about humanity through the eyes of of an outsider, like an alien, seemed like it would be fun and funny. And um, so, yeah, so I agreed to do it. And it was a long process. I changed a lot from the comic. Just And I love the comic, by the way. It's just a different genre. And you got to create a TV show. You have to find a way to, you know, have enough story in there and character dynamics to be able to hold a bunch of episodes. Um, it used to be, the goal used to be 100 episodes. Now, you know, if you shoot for 50, it'd be great. So you, you just have to have a lot going on. So I, I did, I changed a lot. I added uh, a couple of characters. Um, I changed Harry a little bit. I made him a little bit more proactive. Uh, I, I, you know, in, in the comic, he he doesn't, he's not there to, to, to kill everybody. I added that uh, so that there was, a place for him to go emotionally. Um, 
So it was a long process. It took me about 10 months. I had to come up with the whole first season uh, on my own um, and uh, and then pitch it in, which I did in August of 2016 and sold it to USA and they ended up shuffling it over to Sci-Fi, which is their sister network. So yeah, but yeah it, was, it was a very, you know, it was a long process, but it was worthwhile. Yeah. And it's, cool. you know, the, um, in the, in the comic book, it was most of those, I think came out, if I remember right, as just like short mini series. So there was only a couple issues and they were kind of, um, almost like your, uh, uh, noir detective type stories Yeah, in, in some of them, which is really good in the comic yeah. book, but I'm not, I'm not sure it would have adapted to enough episodes for a series. Yeah, and the series, I mean, the comic is great. And Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse did an incredible job and continue to do an incredible job with it. But the comic is is a little bit of a, each episode, each uh, comic is a different murder. Uh, and I knew I couldn't really do that. It just, you know, it would feel like who would live in this town if there was a murder every week. <laughs> but I did take the initial murder from the comic and make that the season one general storyline. So that's what drags harry into town and that's you know the the mystery of season one we've actually done a pretty good job since then coming up with other mayhem and and different murders and shit for so i don't know if i can swear on this yeah i know I can <laughs> oh, you can. Yeah. yeah you absolutely can um oh, good. we've had alice on the show before so ah well that's uh, ah well there you go yeah anyway so i uh <laughs> we've done a good job finding different mysteries and stuff for uh the sheriff and live to to solve so uh it's it still feels organic it doesn't feel like there's there's too many people dying. And when people do die and disappear, and it seems like a lot, we write to it. You know, one of the, um, one of the, the whole, the cast is terrific. I, I I thought the casting was, was just great. And I love how everybody, I was telling Meredith off camera, everybody gets along so well, you always see you in groups, you know, like any interview I see, it's always a group of you uh, together. And that's how as fans, we kind of take the, the show is that everybody gets along so well you know is that the case i mean that's that's what i've heard meredith and sarah and alice they've, they've told me that <laughs> is that really the case is well, i'll, I'll really say something cool? really quick and then someone else jump in but i'll say the fact that we're all on this podcast because meredith said hey i'm doing this podcast do you guys want to do it and everyone said yeah well yeah one person wasn't quite sure he wanted to come <laughs> yeah <laughs> this was not a surprise to us i'm not going to say who it was I know, my who, I know who the last person to, you know, to on my screen, he's right <laughs> below me. I don't know where he is on everyone else's screen, but it's, you know, he's touching his eyeballs. I'm not going to say who yeah. it is. Scratching his nose. <laughs> Michael is shaking it was his nothing, head and moving his nothing mouth. Personal. So, nothing personal. Nothing personal. Anyway, someone else jump in. Everyone gets along really well. It's, it, we got incredibly lucky. We, uh, even yeah. though there's one person who doesn't really want to be part of it, there's everyone else. Gets <laughs> <in the room. laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all hang out all the time because we're stuck. I mean, most of us, uh, besides Bowen, like, are not from Vancouver where we shoot. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't really, like, we, so we spend an enormous amount of time on set with each other. And that extends into get togethers. And um, pretty much everybody is, I mean, I'm so excited to be on a show where I just respect everybody so much. Um, not that I've had experiences, uh, the opposite, <laughs> but I really, really do I feel love like everybody on this show, bit. except for one person who knows who they are, who's on the call <laughs> right now, but otherwise everybody's. <laughs> that, uh... you know, we also, we were locked down for COVID too. So we were all we had, you know, uh, we knew we could be safe around one another because, you know, we were being tested regularly and um you know everyone around us was masking so that kind of uh insulated us even further uh with respect to our bond and our connection and and i think that's reflected in what comes through on the screen yeah i, I agree with that and and Corey, i i loved you on the closer and every time i see your your character it always makes me i know this is dumb but it makes me wonder you know wonder what it would be like if your character from the closer was in that role as sheriff mike <laughs> He would have solved the crime by now. I mean, I he would have, he he with, with him and with him and with him and Liv, they would have, they would have, they would have solved this right now. Uh, you know, Mike is the best thing to happen to overtime and patience uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you know he elongates the investigations with the tangents he goes off on. But yeah, I think I'd like to imagine he and Gabriel are cousins. 
that meet at like a family cookout once a year and always act like they're gonna oh, call you know, I never each thought other. Of that. I like, I'm gonna that. call you, man. He was like, yeah, you call me, and then they never call each other. Neither yeah. one of them. Are <laughs> and did the, did the women be... bring the bring lemonade and cutlery? Do the women right, bring yes. lemonade and cutlery? <laughs> yeah, as, as we're <laughs> as we're slicing up the dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> but well, I, I saw um, I saw that in the or I, I read in the in the comic book the the person that could see the alien or to see Harry was a girl. I, th I think honey in, in the, what, uh, yes. what brought about the decision to bring Judah on. Uh, that's a very good question. And I have a very specific. <laughs> Wait, what? Alan's very excited. <laughs> and just I don't know one... why my thing does that. I don't know why if you do it... this, uh, Oh, oh. <laughs> it's the, oh, it's the new, you're setting it's us the up. New, like, Everybody's zoom. doing it now. This Are you start. setting us up? How did you do that? No, <laughs> no it's the new like, just thing. It, it like auto awesome. activates. See that? Like, I oh, what you I can do. Look up. at this. Oh, wait, I think you can do this too. You can, you can do a thumbs up too, I think. Wait, how oh, did you do that? Oh, here. Wait, <laughs> I, nothing's happening on my screen. I my didn't get any of this. Fuck yeah. We ain't doing shit. For some reason, for me, it's balloons. <laughs> you have to be you have to be a really big what is that fun stuff. i don't know how did you how are you guys I doing that? Good. oh my goodness <laughs> i think I don't sorry know. technology I I think what were you saying about that there was a girl you guys there was a girl Honey. there was I think there the was, a, question, there was a girl. I mean, there was a there was a girl, and Chris, you'd said to me, you'd pulled me aside and said, "I don't know you yet, but I just wanted you to know that we can't recast as a the girl to a boy because there's too many girls on TV, and I hadn't met you yet, and it was a fun conversation." <laughs> I don't think that's I don't think that's what I said actually. I think, yeah, I um, but there is a specific okay, reason I switched it from a girl to a boy, um, which is that I wanted the story in the pilot to be uh, Harry trying to kill this kid. Yeah. And I was afraid that if it was a girl, it would be too dark. Uh, it being a boy somehow softens it. It shouldn't, but it, it does. Uh, well, Harry's going to kill, like, uh, kill a little mean, girl. Yeah. can kill me, so. He had to get right. the right person for that role. Because, I, I mean, the I'm not sure the show yeah. works without Judah in that role. I think that's right. I think and Judah yeah, and, yeah. Star, yeah. Judah yeah. and yeah. Alan have a great chemistry as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was great. I've just rewatched it since we're now on Netflix. I just rewatched season one, and I was I was shocked about how much I torture him. Yeah, and when yeah. he comes in, I, <laughs> I first try to kill him, and then you come in to get stitches. I don't give you any anesthesia for your stitches. <laughs> yeah, I am pricking your cut to give you stitches, <laughs> and then I just stick my thumb in it, and I'm just <laughs> gouging your yes, that. That one scene so where you cool. flip over the like dentist thing and I jump out the window. Like oh, yeah. my brain was telling with me saw. it was fake, but it was genuinely scary. Like <laughs> climbing up on the counter and jumping out the window. And it wasn't like, it had to be safe. So it wasn't like I would jump out of a window. There was a box about like a foot below it. So I, every t single time I jumped, I had to like lay down on the box, but make it look like I was falling. <laughs> it, it was scary. <laughs> Acting. You Acting. pull it off. You I do my own stunts. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and some Alan, other people's. Alan, how <laughs> um how did you become attached to the role? Because that's another one. I now that we've seen it, I'm not sure anybody else could play that alien. Uh yeah. thank you. I don't know how you know, I came in last. I was the last one on board. I, I was uh I don't know what I did to that casting director, <laughs> but uh, she didn't call me in till after at least a hundred guys had gone through on that role. <laughs> and uh, then when I went in, I, I think you guys were already up in Vancouver, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we were in Vancouver. And, and I just, I auditioned with uh, like Zoom like this over a computer. I was like, hey, mm -hmm. and did it. And it felt like it went well. And I think very quickly we like yeah, made the deal. We had right? to we had to get that. someone by like the following. It was like on a Friday. We I think we the in, the uh, you put yourself on Zoom on on Friday, but we actually talked to you Thursday night. I don't know if you remember that. So David and I, David Dobkin was the director. Yes, and was instrumental also in this incredible casting. Oh, that's um, right. But we talked to Alan the night before to sort of give him a sense of what the what the character was so that he could sleep on it and then come back the next day and, and audition. 
And uh, I remember that night before on Thursday night, and we had Alan's right. We had seen, I think he was 113th guy who came in. Um, wow. And we wow. got off the Zoom and we hung up and looked at each other and we're like, we think this is the guy. 112 Aww. didn't make it. So one could make it. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Like, uh, there we go. You're and like, the 112. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. And then in his audition, he just was, he was this guy. And I, I, you know, I, I fault myself. I just didn't know. I, I, I wrote it a certain way and I had it away in my head. That wasn't what Alan was doing. And, but a lot of the people were doing it and it just wasn't interesting enough. Right. There, and great, by the way, great actors who came in and it just wasn't special enough. And then Alan did with his thing and it was, A, it was funny and it was only one of a couple of funny auditions, but he was very funny, but there was a, a tremendous amount of humanity inside. It felt like there was a child inside, uh, inside his skin, figuring things out for the first time. Uh, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, we knew immediately. It was amazing. Was it difficult, and this is just for the group, was it difficult keeping the show um, grounded? You know, it's funny, but it never quite goes into silly, if that makes sense. Because it could, it could, this type of show, it could very easily slip into like slapstick, I think, and, mm -hmm. and it would lose, you know, part of the reason the show's so great is it it has some, so many deep storylines that you don't expect you know there's some deep right. subject matters um but it never gets to that point where you're just like well that's ridiculous that doesn't make any sense and yeah and, and that's, I, yeah go ahead i, I think that's that's no no i just i just finished rewatching because i'm committed to us just cracking number one on netflix so i just <laughs> finished round three of seasons one and two and let me tell you i i, I was just like holy shit everybody is yeah, because nobody is lacking and like that's the baseline for everyone on the show. Like everyone is there, everyone's comedic geniuses and have these unbelievable chops where they can just, you know, I, I mean it's it's incredible, but everyone's like baseline is such deep humanity that you just like you care about everybody. That never that so none of the humor it feels like it's ever at, at the expense of the humanity on a show to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's well said. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And 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 Sarah, when you know, I, I've been rewatching the show too. So so I'm I'm through most of season one. Your storylines in that first season they were so rough. Like it was very yeah. awesome season with that. It was uh, at times difficult to uh, to watch. <laughs> and it, that I don't know to, for a for a show going in that you thought was going to be just a, a comedy. There's it's so much more. So well done. Yeah, I think Chris does a really amazing job combining. Um, you know, incredible comedic moments with really heartfelt sentiment, mm -hmm. you know, sentimentality. And actually, Alan and I were at the TCAs recently, and he came up to me and was like, what was that pilot? We went through some shit. I, I took a man yeah. through a wall. You were like dealing with an abusive <laughs> husband. Like, I was like, yeah, that's right. I guess it's been a minute. But I think Asta by now in season three has lightened up a bit. She's been through a lot. And I think that was part of what Chris and I discussed for her in season three. Like we need to see her like make a joke herself or like go on a date or do something different, you know, just because she can't be, um, I, I mean, it's like the Grey's Anatomy episodes, like how many awful things can happen to right. one hospital, you know? Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and I think that's what you were saying too, Chris, about, you know, you can't have every season or every episode be about a murder, even though you do this great job of it still being sort of a mystery throughout the whole show. It's just such a wonderful combination. And for people who don't normally watch sci-fi, they like click right into the like small town, you know, murder mystery of it all. And for people who do watch sci-fi, they're just like enthralled by the alien aspect and the gray aliens. And it's just wonderful. It's so good for so many different audience members. Yeah, I agree. With that and Jenna, I wanted to mention you because I re rewatching season one. I love how your character just shows up. She shows up, <laughs> drops the line, you know, does something crazy, and then she's gone again for the scene. I love that. That's what I always say to Chris. I'm like, it's the perfect role. I come, you know, something crazy is gonna happen, yeah. and then I like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually really mean it. It's like because she's never gonna be there and just you know be delivering the. The plot points is always like the viewer knows if she's on screen like something she's probably going to pee in a plant or 
Yeah, I told her that uh, uh, it, to me, it reminds me of like when I was a kid watching Three Stooges and finding out it was a Curly episode. I don't know if anyone gets this reference, but no, it's not <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. want to be Curly Joe. It's a Curly as a I get it for funny. sure. When you know Jenna comes into a scene, you know it's going to be funny. Yeah. You know, when when cable first came out, this is dating me a little bit, but late 70s, we got cable. And the only channel that came with cable was uh, TBS. That was the only difference. That's right. Cable. Yeah. And they showed like at uh, six to eight in the morning, they would show Three Stooges and, <laughs> yeah. and, and Little Rascals too. And I watch those all the time. And the same thing, you know, certain episodes, when you see that it's it's not the right uh, person showing up, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, but then if it's curly, you're like, hey. <laughs> sure. That's Jenna. Yeah. She's but Jenna girl. also writes. Jenna's also one of our writers. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, wrote, they had that great uh, episode in season two. Uh, girls' where, Night. Girls' Night. Yeah, Girls' Night, where Alex Borstein, Borstein showed up. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that there's a lot of girl power in, in the show. Was that intentional or did that just kind of develop because of the chemistry? I would say both. I mean, from my standpoint, it was always intentional to give a voice to women in a in a TV world where they don't often have it. Uh, and then you have these incredible uh, actors who play so well together and have incredible chemistry. I remember episode three of the first season when uh, Sarah and Alice first really played together, went to that high school party, was the first time that I realized how good that chemistry was between them. They had those moments on the beach together. And that sort of solidified what that was going to be to me. Uh, moving forward um, but yeah chemistry does a big thing when you see how well people work together you try to you try to feed that yeah I think um, that friendship between Alice your character and uh, Sarah is pretty believable you know you watch them together and you're like hey, <laughs> that that fits if you saw them out somewhere you'd be like okay yeah they look like friends yeah I mean I, I I love watching female friendships. I mean, there's so many it's really funny how mentioned Grey's Anatomy, Sex in the City, like how successful a show can be when you depict female friendship with like uh earnestness and you when you depict a female friendship with like full humanity shows go crazy they get really popular and it's because they're so it's so rare to do that and so i'm really excited to be on a show that has um so many opportunities to explore all the different female friendships and when uh i remember when my first scene i had with judy i remember that being of a, a towny relationship like part of the greatness of judy's character is that she's not only this whack-a-mole weirdo person but she's also <laughs> real part of the texture of the town she has so many jobs and so when she first showed up there was like this kind of contentious sort of like you know bickering relationship and i was like this really reminds me of like that relationship that's so old that you have with somebody that it's like you're like you're a whore okay love you <laughs> You know, and we just <laughs> took that and ran with it. And I'm so, I just, I just love it. It's so unique. To yeah. See and it comes across so well. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, Elizabeth, I didn't forget about you. You know, one of the best oh, things about the show has been watching oh. your character develop, you know, watching Liv, you know, she was, oh, so, you know, kind of that uh, hide in the corner type of character. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. as it went along, she kind of found herself. Yeah, no, she sort of, I think I think she always knew she had a voice. She just didn't know how to use it or didn't give herself permission to use it. So it's been fun, like, and heartbreaking also watching her kind of be less and less scared to say what she thinks, uh, to maybe not be as apologetic for, like, existing, <laughs> you know? So that's been great. What did... What would it, what was your line, Alan, about she's a, a rabbit that somebody pet too hard or something? Oh, yeah, losing her hair or something? Losing her hair could somebody pet her too hard. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's, I, like, I just, she's like yeah. a scared rabbit. But then by season two, you're going in undercover with Sheriff Mike, and he has that whole thing going to talk to the realtor, and he's like, I've got this whole thing. I'm a I'm an announcer for this and that. I'm and a I'm helicopter a, pilot. Yeah, I'm I'm funny. Pilot. Got a whole backstory, and that you're a stay-at-home mom. And right as you walk <laughs> in, you're like, "Hi, 
takes it right over. It's hilarious. So <laughs> funny. So funny. And that's why he looks so tired. That's what I love. It. See, yeah. a little whisper there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man, one thing about this group, yeah. you know, everyone in here brings it. I think we've all been in this business long enough to, to have had the experience of being on sets where some people just show up, right? right? That, that, that's not what this is. Everyone here is committed to the process, to the storytelling, to our characters, to one another. You know, we don't have people strolling in, you know, reading their lines off of a coffee cup. You know, right. oh, the murderer was found over here. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, we we really like we give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> this is this has been like this little bitty baby we've all been holding now since since 2018. And uh, and to see it kind of like take these baby steps and then the baby leaps and now take off and start running. I still got to figure out how y'all doing that. I think this computer is racist. I think it's what really boils down. It's like, no. it's like no, it's no, 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 no. Oh, black, black Corey, people. it's not. See? <laughs> I bet if I do this, a clan thing will come up. Like, you know, like Please a white God. hood. I will happen. <laughs> no, but no, I mean, in, in, the, in, the, in the series, so like we all really like everyone shows up. Like, you know, you know when when you're coming in, or whether it's first thing in the morning and last thing at night, that the person coming and and doing scene work with you is going to come in prepared and and everyone cares. We're all invested. Yeah, yeah, and I think as as fans we see that. You know, you can tell that there's nobody just phoning it in. You know, it's mm -hmm. everybody seems to really enjoy what they're doing, which is part of the reason I think it's so uh, so popular. And it's been difficult, I'm sure. I mean, most shows don't have to go through a pandemic and then a strike. Mm -hmm. and still... Two strikes. Well, yeah, two strikes. <laughs> yeah, so, so can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Was it was it difficult getting back into it for the, for the new season with all the the delays? Was it, Levi? Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Levi, how did you feel about it? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, what was our last break between? See, it was over a year, wasn't it? Uh, between two and three, it's all well, a blur. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I I go back home to I'm here now in Alaska. You know, there's only thirty thousand people in this town, and I just kind of assume that this show never even happened, and then I just made it up. I mean, it's just such a long gap between. <laughs> yeah. It's so different here, and then all of a sudden you're like back in vancouver with all these people filming it just feels like a simulation i don't know it just all feels very surreal and weird and i also can't believe it's been six years yeah uh, i don't know yes. like what's the, i don't know what to compare it to i i have i wasn't i didn't do a show at, at this caliber before this so i don't know like how fast things would go or how many more episodes i know back when i you know there used to be 24 episodes a season and that's not happening anymore in like a, yeah. you know, kind of mini series, series Netflix world. But like, I don't know the difference. So I'm with you, Levi. Like some days I'm pinching myself just like, yeah. did that, is this real? Is this really and, what this right. is? And then, is this I, and then I look at my bank account happening? and I'm like, I'm not on a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Judah, money. Judah, six years is half your life. Just the best. <laughs> no, he like Chris said he started working on this in 2016. I have vivid memories of being in kindergarten in, wow. in 2016. Yeah, but you were held wow. back a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'll have you know, I'm almost a freshman, so I can't. Oh my wow. god! Oh my That's god! Crazy. Don't do this to your mother. Don't do this. To your mother, please. Well, I can't wait three more months. We oh came right out of the gate slow because remember. Can you guys see that? Forever. Oh my yeah. gosh. No. Oh, wow. Look at that how like, tiny. tiny. That looks like a miniature yeah. version of you. That looks like <laughs> your kid. <laughs> you want some, of the, <laughs> <laughs> you want some of the worst parts about being like so yik, young and light voiced. I have a lot of friends who will go and they'll they'll go search stuff on my show from when I was like eight <sighs> years old. And they'll speed it up two times. So it's like the little like high pitched voice. Tip me. <laughs> Those bastards. Welcome to showbiz, kids. Let's just say we're right. not friends. Oh, you'll, you'll show them next season when you're talking like this. You know what I mean? Because that's where yeah, this is. Yeah, that's coming. That's right around the corner. 
<laughs> Buy yourself a Mustang. You'll be just fine. <laughs> but, yeah. Actually, <laughs> one, of, one, of my, one of my friends, he told his younger brother that I wasn't getting recast because I was too old now. Oh, <laughs> wow. Jeez. It's a, it's a possibility. And, and, and he, he never, like, I'm going to be really honest with you. It's possible. <laughs> well, listen, now that now that you brought it up, we 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 all brought you here for a reason today. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is actually a podcast. It's an intervention. It's an intervention. It's an intervention. Yeah. <laughs> We're terrible, We're terrible. I'm actually oh. curious, Judah. Like, what was it like for you to be on set and having to be doing school at yeah. the same time? Like, I don't have that experience from. Okay, your well, age, first so. thing I want to say, um, uh, my set teacher Linda so great i just want to get that out there also oh cool i feel like going off that like the connections in the show go way deeper than just like in the show they go into real life like i did school with gracie and we would like play games on break and stuff we were like really good friends Aww. not worth still are <laughs> still yeah. <are>. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in well, peace, Yeah, <laughs> Levi. I think I think your character is the one that I relate to the most because it right? just seems so stressed out. Yeah, <laughs> like because like, I'm an introvert at heart, so I tend to in social situations, non populated, get a little nervous, and that's yeah. how I feel like your character is. How are you yeah, able yeah, to yeah. pop into that? How are you able to even do that? I yeah, I was. I was, I didn't even want to get out of bed today. I was just having anxiety about this. I was in, <laughs> I don't know, we, are, we are one in the same boat, Levi. Is that right? You, you too? Yeah. Oh, it's oh, like father, like father like son. There you go. I love, it. I love it. Well, so let's talk about the new season. So I watched the first episode. It was great. Meredith says that this is their best, oh, your Lenny. best season. Is that, is that the case? Is this the That's one? That's what's up. No this is a big it. one it's the most consequential i would say yeah mm. it's also like with the stuff with sarah we were talking about your first season being it was like so much rough stuff for asta there was so much stuff that happened with the characters that seemed like i think a lot of people were like what is going on with this married couple and their sex life you know and there's like been so many like <laughs> What is good? Like, I really love that because now in season three, you know, these people so well that like when the shit starts to hit the fan, you don't feel like, oh, none of their actions make sense. You feel like, mm -hmm. oh, of course that person is going to do that thing. Of course they're going to treat it like this. Or for, for Darcy, it's like, of course she's going to make this about herself to disastrous consequences. And it's much more fun, I think, to watch a show where the character development is deliberate and it takes its time. And I think that's what we did really successfully. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah Chris, uh, I thought you did such a good job um, making sure that every episode, everybody kind of gets their, their scene. And as the series went along, everybody's character has developed and evolved as, as it's went along. And that's always, not always easy to do with an ensemble. So I thought that was really well done. Yeah, thank you. It, it's not easy to do. Um, we obviously have a great writing staff and we work really hard at that. It's hard, you know, the longer you go on, the bigger the world gets, you know, there's more and more characters to service. And uh, it is, it, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to sort of satisfy every character. But I, I, I sort of go from the aspect of if we can create something that the actor is excited to play, then the audience will be excited to watch it. So I, 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 I try to, I, I start from the place of trying to make, you know, these actors happy. And, and to be honest, like if you have really smart actors who know story, which all these people do, if you are satisfying them creatively, and if that's your goal, then the show will, will play out great. So that's yeah. sort of the goal. Mission would you say accomplished. Any actors that you punish? Hmm. <laughs> What's that? Would you say there, there are any uh, actors in the cast that you punish with? <laughs> Not in ways that you would ever know that I'm doing it. <laughs> you sure? No, that, I would not do that. By the way, I've worked with people Except who do that. Except for the laundry bag. I've definitely Wait a worked second. with people who, who do that. Really? really? You've oh, worked yeah. with like showrunners who purposely 100%. do that to their actors? Where an actor, if an actor says, uh, I, I don't I don't like this line, it's not funny. He, he'd be like, they, I'm not going to say it's a he or a she. <laughs> it's a he. <laughs> Obviously. Out of the Obviously. Bag. They would be like, uh, okay. And then the next day, the actor has like a third of the lines that they had the, night, the day before. Wow. Oh. Power of the pen. Power of the pen. 
<laughs> don't mess with the bull. You'll get the horns. <laughs> the <don't> guys. <laughs> was the um, was it a difficult <laughs> Thanks, decision Levi. to um to keep it an hour format? I know you were trying to get to that hour format, but you know initially I thought maybe this will work as a half hour. But I think it, it you need an hour to get the whole story out. I think you need an hour. Um, yeah, we run. I think our runtime this year was forty four minutes ish. Uh, you need you need all of that. A, a half hour. I mean, half hour shows are twenty two minutes. You know, it's just not enough time to tell the depth of story that we're that we're doing. So the hour format is is works really well for us. And I think that forty five minutes ish, I think, is a sweet spot for viewers watching a TV show. I think when shows get to an actual hour long, hour 10, it starts feeling like it drags a little bit. It's hard to hard to stay uh, focused for that long. I think for, I think we're in a, a pretty good sweet spot as far as 45 minutes. And I think this the reason that this season is, I think, you know, that people really like it is, uh, and the cast thinks it's great, is that eight episodes is, you know, it's a clip. Like every, there's a lot of stuff going on in these eight episodes. First season was 10, second season was 16, this season was eight. And I think the sweet spot is probably eight or 10 episodes uh, because this one, it really moves fast. There's a lot going on. There's uh, a lot happening to that first on. episode. Yeah. There's a lot happening. Yeah. And there's no, there's no episodes where you sort of feel like we're treading water. And I, and I, I did love season two. There was, it was hard to tell that story in 16 episodes. So there were some moments and some, some episodes in, in, uh, in the se second season that I felt we were treading water a little bit story-wise. Yeah. Um, you don't feel that. This That's time. when he would just let Liz and I just ad lib. <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes an episode. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So Go funny. ahead, I'll, guys. I'll be on set with Corey and it'll be like, <laughs> yeah. I've read the script 10,000 times. Like sometimes I even start to like know the other actor's lines word by word. Just like I know them. Right. So I'll know his whole monologue mm. and then he'll go off the walls. I, <laughs> I almost laugh out loud. I almost laugh out loud. <laughs> in the middle of a take and i'm like i can't it's such they, they just keep it fresh <laughs> <laughs> i will say this though man you know chris uses uh more of our improvs than any other show i've ever worked on. i mean there were some moments on the close where i knew i was doing some funny shit dude but it just did, <laughs> it didn't it didn't work for you know for that character a little more serious you know? though, so, yeah you know what i mean so it would like end up on the editing floor but i was like oh Ooh. man there was one joke i made about this this hollywood guy on the episode who who was who was murdered or something and i made a joke about like having the action figure of the guy you know like was an improv and one guy Tony was like, oh, so you, you played with dolls? And I was like, it wasn't a doll. It was an action figure. It had the kung fu grip. And it was so fucking funny. And that shit didn't make it in. But on this show, we actually have uh, a, a shot to actually have our material, you know, that pops in our head actually kind of weasel its way into the final cut, uh, which is nice, you know. Well, I would assume that that's part of the reason everybody gets along so well is because you're invested. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh... Full circle. Yeah, but no. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've worked with people who improv, and it's it can become a problem. Sure. Uh, if they don't, if they aren't committed to the characters and the development of the story, you know, there are some some people. Yeah, there's 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 people who improv that to help this that helps the story and and is part of the what's going on. And some people are just. Pams. Doing doing silly stuff. Yeah. I'll stop, I, Alan. I, I'll stop. I'll stop. Oh no, 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 no. I but I you know, I did a movie once and there was two extra weeks of that movie and I we were over two weeks and I I knew exactly who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Googling None seriously. of it ended up in the movie. None of it. Because it was useless. It was, right. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's a fine line there and you got to be it's not that fine for the the doctor and the showrunner too yeah uh alan i wanted to ask you you know part of the reason that we love uh harry so much is you know chris mentioned that he's kind of a childlike figure but it's been fun watching him you know kind of learn humanity as he goes along yeah. so, you know he starts out at the beginning and you know his uh uh phrasing and stuff isn't quite right and it kind of improves it goes along but you can tell he's He's finding a lot of his stuff either on the internet or on TV. 
And so it's kind right. of kind of bleeds into that. But that had to be a fun character to play. It's fantastic. It's uh it's a lot. It, I I feel really lucky to get to play Harry because he he is a like you say he's like childlike and um you know he he yeah he he draws from so many different sources that he can be very smart about certain things uh and then immediately stupid like in uh season 2 where he's delivering the baby and he knows everything about uh <laughs> delivering the baby and he got it off of YouTube and so much so that he ends up saying uh like and subscribe yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Out loud, because that's that's where he got it from. So he's smart and stupid uh, always, and that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got uh, you know one of the things that's great about the show is you keep bringing in like ex science fiction stars to guest star. You know, was that a conscious decision, or did it just kind of work out that way in casting? Oh, that's a conscious decision. I mean, that's it, when you're in a, a genre show like this with sci-fi, it makes sense to try to feed the audience these things. So whenever we're looking for a big uh, uh, guest star, we, we definitely start with looking at this at the sci-fi world and see see who would excite the fans. But that's that's definitely our first step when we're looking for that. We've and we've had some great people on. Yeah, yeah, you got some good ones coming this season, I think. Yes. You know, I thought you know, <laughs> uh, Alice, you said in one interview that you were you were making up fake spoilers, but I didn't get the joke. So at one point, I thought the yes. Rock was coming on the show. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness! Don't, that's one of the guys I want to meet. I have two people I want to meet. Yeah. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Two people. Oh, like, wow. I, I feel like those are doable for you. That was just a throwaway thing I said during EPK, and then I was like, you say a million things during EPK, and then for some reason they put it in the promo. <laughs> 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 but the funny thing was, is The Rock The Rock was at Comic-Con and he was standing by us while we were waiting to go into <laughs> like our next interview. And I was like, that guy looks like The Rock. And I'm like, hey, dum-dum, we're at Comic-Con. It's The Rock. Anyway, <laughs> it's the rock. just want you to know he, he was there. So you're, it was kind of right. I'm actually here right now. I, Dwayne. What? Oh, no, I just didn't know if you would have wanted Dwayne. Oh, so he's making a cup of coffee. I'll see. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Can he just pop his head around the corner, please? Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's kind of camera shy. Doesn't have his makeup on. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a little guy. Tiny guy. <laughs> Do you have, as a group, is there favorite lines from the show? The dialogue's so good. And I know I've got a few for, for me, but is there a favorite line either for your character or just something that somebody else has said on the show? Oh man, oh, there's one coming dude. up. I can't even say it. I think is it episode two coming up in season three? It's gonna be Sheriff Mike, and I can't. I can't look. You need to watch because it's one of my favorite moments the entire series. It's coming. That's all you I know, can tell you. <laughs> I had one the other day. We were. I was watching season one in the interrogation scene, and I said to that <laughs> stoner kid, uh, <laughs> "You'd be like a." A big old ham wrapped in pineapple sitting smack dab in the middle of a ham and pineapple lovers convention when telling him that he was going to go to prison. <laughs> and, uh, that one actually made me laugh out loud. My son comes out. He's like, are you laughing at yourself? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. That's, that's totally fine. I can do that. But that's, that's I mean, but and Alan's the when you call uh, Max an asshole. Uh, when when you're walking, when when he thinks, oh, when you yes. talk about the towers, you know, yeah, and I'm yeah. getting to know a stupid alien thinks we live yeah. in a town with towers, and he walks away, and you're like, asshole. <laughs> 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 and it gets you every time. I, I oh. cackled the other day watching Liz with the burger and like smashing oh, it, and but my favorite oh, yeah. part at the end is when she's like, "Cause it's not okay to waste food." And she <laughs> and her, her oh, shut up stop. as she's going up. Shut, up. shut <laughs> up, and I hadn't said anything. That was great. I <laughs> that was you almost bust. And Levi spun his little like candle lighter thing, and he's like, "Want to fire it up?" Oh. <laughs> I, I just re I just rewatched the scene where where oh. she, Mayor Ben is having a real real good day and he's got his aviators oh. on and he walks in and puts his fucking boot up on the the thing and mike's like what is that 
He's like, I think you'd call these shit kickers. And he looks at, at Liz. <laughs> Deputy Liv just makes this sweet little smile. And then he's like, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, we'll see what you think once I draw a tiny dick on it. And then yeah, buddy. the way you hit tiny dick instead of tiny dick <laughs> just destroys me. And then Levi <laughs> ripping the foot down and going like in like a kind of gravelly voice, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm only move, I'm only putting that down because this position was aggravating my sciatica. It's the attic. <laughs> I, I fell off over that. That was Sarah. Oh, he was like, yeah, "Can you him, do it?" Like, him. sorry, go ahead, Bowen. I was just gonna say, I just love that in part of his trying to be a badass, he oh. thinks it's such a badass move to mention his sciatica. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that day. Chris was like, "Can you try one like Clint Eastwood, <laughs> like in a spaghetti western?" Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That that scene, uh, I think it's in season one where you guys are doing karaoke together, your reunion back together, and oh it just cuts to Darcy, and she's like, "What the hell is happening?" My favorite Jerry. lines of mine don't make it in the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, there's that town hall line, Levi, where I said oh like we were doing improvised questions where I would raise my hand, and we just yeah. did a series of them, and one of them I just was like, "I got a, I got a question." How do you do it? And <laughs> Levi's face when I delivered that line, oof, he was red. That was and, great. <laughs> but my favorite, what's sticking in my mind are from most recent episodes. Uh, well, my favorite line of all time is when Judy is talking about Malcolm 10 and <laughs> gives Sheriff Mike <laughs> the biography and, and Liz goes, oh, Judy. Oh, Judy. I love that so much. <laughs> but I love the way Alan says um, in oh. the last scene with, with Asta when they're hugging and he's crying and he goes, the way he says you're afraid of me now makes, I, I've been saying it yeah. over oh. my head, like, you're afraid of me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're afraid of me now. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. So weird. Oh. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. That's a job. I'm well, that, was, that really monologue fun. was amazing. That <laughs> monologue was amazing, dude. The in there where, where you just want, all you want to do is just be able to kill her. And that's all you're asking for. <laughs> and it's this torturous you. thing, man. It's so uh, beautifully done, though, man. Like, guys, seriously, yes. it was, it yeah, was, that, it was just spectacular. Incredible. There was a, just uh, incredible. the, the uh, great, great, that, that was fun. Alan doing the, uh, the scripted in there, the, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. I don't get it. But that so that was scripted, but that was that was here's an example of how it happens sometimes. That was off of a a style of humor that Alan ad libbed in episode 209 when uh after the body, you know, they had the body outside and 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 Alan has been shot, Harry's been shot, and us is inside with 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 Harry and Darcy's there and Darcy goes out to check on the body. Anyway, there was a piece of that scene where in one of those speeches, Alan, you started like peppering in sort of repetition things to Austin. I don't remember exactly what it was, but Austin yeah, saying yeah. something. And anyway, I remember how funny that was. And then that, so I scripted the same type of thing. So that was sort of a callback to that, that moment. Mm. But that's how it works sometimes. That. Like Alan is improving this stuff. And it's very funny, and it's a and it's a character thing, like it's something the character would do, and you sort of put that in your back pocket, and you try to trot it out um, in another moment. I just watched what? the episode where Alan, you say, um, "I'm I'm feeling attacked. I'm snowflake." Yeah. That, I'm that, snowflake. That was, that was me up. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I love that. I'm snowflake. I forgot about that. Wow, yeah, I'm snowflake. Yeah, it's, it's really, yeah, it's really we, great. We we just watched that a couple of days ago, and we've already used it like three times. Well, <laughs> and you know what else is great in there is Judah's apology. His first apology was like, "I'm sorry," <laughs> like completely does this this, this apology before it. Oh it was yeah, great. It's, it's a great scene. Great scene. Could laugh about that all day. Yeah, yeah. it was good. It was a great scene. Oh. So and 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 Levi knocking over the sand. Come on, man. That uh, <laughs> that the sand getting knocked over thing was was just the hilarious. zen anyway. the zen garden the zen garden. Yes. Oh, Levi, <laughs> just that was like perfection. Every, 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 every time, time he, did it, he nailed it. Every, every time single he, time he nailed it. You made it look like it had actually just happened for the first time. Every time I was like, go, buddy. That that was maybe my favorite episode to film. That was uh, 
the first episode Jenna wrote uh, for the for the show, yeah. and uh, just had so many fun fun bits in that. It was a blast of an episode. Sadly, we couldn't. We had a whole scene of Levi <laughs> of sorry Mirban calling all his dude friends to hang out with him. Oh my god! So you know, like Kate's like go out or I forget who <laughs> says but you go out for the night too. And we had a whole, we just couldn't keep it in because we had to keep the episode under, you know, 42 minutes or something. But <laughs> he's like bad. going down in his like little <laughs> ad book, like calling. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh, it was oh, I want to see that so bad. Oh, we should. I w- yeah, I wish there was like DVD extras or something. Mm-hmm. Mayor, no, what did you yeah. say when Sahar says that thing about climate change and the packaging? Yep. Oh, you, oh. you can you can just say no. Oh, yeah, you can just say no. Oh, I do love that. Yeah, we just yeah. watched that one too. Yeah, you could just yeah, say, you can just yeah. say no. Listen, I just say no. It's that, like yeah. it's stuff like it's okay. stuff like that on this show. These little details between people that are like you know just the care, the care and detail in these many relationships, like. Yes. That little antagonism between me and Sahar, it has like gone over on. and over again, you know? Yeah, it's you just, are really sick of shit at this point. Well, that was episode I 10 in the first season, Sahar too. doesn't want takeout yeah, because yeah. it's ruining the planet. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. But it's and stuff it, like that makes the show so much richer because it's like, it's everywhere. It's peppered everywhere. All of this, I'm like, yeah, it, I don't know. It's just, a, it's a testament to the writing because I'm just like, you don't waste a moment. Like, you don't waste a single yeah. relationship dynamic on the show. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah, was started in episode ten, I think, where she she makes a comment about uh, in the house where she says, "I'm gonna at some point like when I'm old like you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. He's like, oh, not old, not old, not, not old, not old. Not old. <laughs> yeah, life's not passing me by. <laughs> or, I gotta say, I gotta Sarah, say one Sarah, more, Chris. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Bowen. Uh, I just gotta go say ahead. one more. When you mentioned two oh nine at the the party where we're all together, which was also really fun to film, but. Uh, Sheriff Mike had this line. He opens the door, or Harry comes up out of the basement, and the baby's escaped, and like the sulfur and everything's in the air. And Sheriff Mike goes, "God damn, you having an outhouse party down there?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best line. I use that all the time. Like, like you having an outhouse party in here or what? That whole, that There's whole a line. No, so fun. no matter how many times they see it from the pilot, when we first are introduced to Sarah's character to Asta. Where what do you say, Sarah? You're like, what the bloody hell when he waits? Yeah, mother I hell. never I never really understood why it was worded quite like that. But yeah, it's what the mother hell. Yeah, yeah, and I've never said it again. And I feel like that may be a recall we need to bring back at some point, yeah. Chris. Because I've never but said just, it again. I, I think it was I just love how annoyed you were. You were just like <laughs> like he was like like shit on your shoe. It was great. Mm-hmm. But also I think part of it is just it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You just were woken up, so you're you're yeah, just yeah. Like, what, I don't even know what's happening right now. <laughs> it's true. It's very funny. Yeah. What uh what uh made you choose Vancouver to film? You know, was that <laughs> was there a choice in that? Or I, I know Vancouver for science fiction you know shows is kind of the place, but but what made you choose Vancouver as opposed to somewhere maybe in the States? Um, it's a great question. I mean, the, the, the place to shoot would be, I mean, you're, you're, you're somewhat limited if you're on a budget, you're somewhat limited to where you can shoot. It's LA, New York, Atlanta, or Vancouver. Typically there are advantages to Vancouver. Um, you know, there's the, the, uh, tax incentives of being up there and also the uh, exchange rate. That's not something that I chose. That was a studio decision and a studio decision that was a pretty smart one ultimately, because it is set in Colorado. You can't shoot it in Colorado because there's no infrastructure to shoot there. Right. You know, the movie you can, you know, fly out a bunch of people for two months, but to have an ongoing series, you know, there's no, there's no grips and cameraman just living in, you know, Crested Butte looking for work. So <laughs> you got to go where there's stages and all that stuff. So that's why I went to Vancouver. Yeah. But it was smart because it is Colorado and it does have that vibe a little bit, you know. And we can shoot up at Whistler, um, which we've done several times, and it feels like the. The Canadian Rockies obviously feel like the Colorado Rockies. So it has the vibe of Colorado. It actually is not a bad. That's what's so great, I think, about Vancouver is it can mimic a lot of different places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rainy places. Yeah. Yeah. The the place, the uh the where Harry's cabin is is actually the we call it a lake in the show, but it's actually an ocean. Uh it's part of the ocean. So we have an issue oh, with yeah. tides and stuff. The tides move very fast there. So we have a 
shooting issue with that. And is Alan, oh, yeah. you told the story really about shooting the pilot there, Alan? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> when we, the first scene where Sheriff Mike and Liv are out there, and you were facing me looking out to the lake, and I guess it was my coverage, and there was a orca family behind swimming behind Ooh, uh, yeah two, two orcas and a baby right yeah it totally felt like tourism bc had arranged <laughs> that or something <laughs> yeah it was like cut there's too much beauty behind you this is <laughs> we, yeah we're sorry i remember we alan when we were doing that scene with uh, my bare feet and we're in the snow and we're walking to the edge oh, yeah. and they were telling us like yeah we're gonna cgi this all out and we were like why it's so gorgeous <laughs> like it's there's like a lake all these beautiful trees but then of course when you see it in the pilot it's like we're uh, on this amazing cliff and yeah. the clouds are out and it's so gorgeous but i mean i remember alan and i being like i don't understand <laughs> like yeah. why yeah. why would we do that i mean that's it's so great to have a place where you have such great locations to shoot yeah. at yeah vancouver's amazing vancouver's mm -hmm. great it rains a lot and it is very it does cool. rain a lot it's it very does. muddy <laughs> the, on the Harry's cabin set. It's like really muddy. And I remember yeah. one time, we, um, the actors, it's like the, you have to put on these different shoes when you're going. And I remember I was walking over to Crafty, which is where you get all your snacks. And I just see one of the crew workers <laughs> face plant. Into the mud. I think I actually took a fall once. It was like I hit this one little like muddy patch and I like put my arm down and my, but my costume had barely touched and we had to get it like everything replaced. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing the crew. Cause like, you know, the crew in LA, you feel like, well, once you've shot in Vancouver, you're like, well, you guys kind of have it easy because like the wardrobe, <laughs> makeup and hair have to deal with, you know, like sudden <laughs> torrential rain everywhere. Downpours. Remember yeah. the blizzard? Pack it down, pull it up, you know, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. So well, handling alone. This, uh, this has been terrific. I, I'm so happy that you guys came on the, uh, the mm -hmm. podcast has been a highlight for me. It's been terrific. Um, before we wrap up, you know, tell me a little bit about what we can expect for the rest of the season. Levi? I <laughs> knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Part us off, Levi. Just, you know, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> We have more, uh, there's a lot, a lot more alien stuff coming up uh, in every way. Uh, there's, there's actual aliens that we'll see. Um, we have, uh, a blue avian alien that comes in, um, played by Edie Patterson, um, will come in, uh, in the first half of the season and be around for a little bit. And that'd be Harry's first sort of love interest. Um, yeah, she looks kind of, I mean, the, the design is pretty awesome looking just from the design's there. incredible. Yeah. That yeah. was uh, Kaylee Jeannie, I think our, our, uh, makeup uh, effects uh, supervisor uh, designed that, and the yeah the the outfit is incredible, and the, the whole thing is that, that's a great that's a great ride. But it is you know one of the things about this third season that that we had wanted to do and we did, which is just it have more alien more alien threat and more alien threat that doesn't have to do with Harry. I mean Harry has his own stuff going on, but you know really try to play you know the an authentic version of the types of things that people believe are really happening in this world which is abductions. We saw it happen to Ben and Kate and um, we're further in that story. Everyone's in, it, it, it goes to a place where everyone is involved in one way or another in the alien story. Do you have an ending in mind for, you know, are you kind of going as you go along, just depending on the show getting renewed or is there, you know, do you have a certain amount of seasons or something set up? It's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I, I hope, I, I think I need at least a couple more seasons to wrap it up effectively. Um, and I do have, I, I do have a final <laughs> I mean, and hopefully we can get it. I mean, I do seven have or a eight final... would be okay. What's that? Seven or eight would be okay. That'd be great too. I mean, I think we could do it for a while, but you know, that, that's out of our hands. All we can do is make the best show that we can. I do have, during the pilot, I had, an, I got an idea. Dude, while shooting the pilot, I got an idea for what I, the way I thought maybe the series would end um, with the last scene. You want to tell it? No. No. <laughs> We need to have the last scene. We need to have a Terminator moment. Yeah, for my character, I kind of need to know the ending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to have like a Does Terminator it... moment. He's leaving to go back to his planet and he just turns around and he goes, I'll be back. 
That's a good idea. Is that what it is? Well, now you can't use that, Chris. Now you can't use it. Oh, you got to pay. Way to go, Judah. Way to go, Judah. I should ruin the oh, wow. 17th season. Uh, He's whatever it is. Chris, I think you nailed what, it. <laughs> whatever it is, it obviously involves The Rock, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's we how we end the, the show. Here. Yeah. I'm going to be laughing there. when he shows up in some season. You know it'll happen. <laughs> I'm still waiting for when <laughs> ET is going to guest star. I mean, what, he better what, be what like he that? better be like Max's new best friend or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I should just have I did ET like that, as uh, like my uh, my new like pet that I bring around on all my <laughs> mysteries with Sar. <laughs> Harry, like riding that, with that, ET in a bicycle I, into the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, did you weren't you the one that said it was like ET if ET was a dick? <laughs> I think I did say that at some point. That's our show. <laughs> I haven't dead. heard that. I, I forget where I said that. I said that on some. It really oh, is. That's that's the, one of the best things I think in the show is just that relationship between uh, Judah and Alan and that kind of battle they do the whole way. Mm. Yeah, that's that's fun to watch. And it, yeah, it's, it's fun to see them. Fun. They have such great chemistry on and off camera so a lot of that comes through in that relationship yeah well thank you guys so much this has been the best <laughs> oh, i don't know who did that but that was awesome <laughs> that was awesome who could it be who could it's it be? one of you stick around and teach me how to do all this yeah Maybe. i don't know how are you guys how are you doing this how are you doing this like, i, I think it only either. works on android devices i because uh, it, it could be anyone no I think oh, I think wow, this is an cool. update. I think you need to update your zooms, everybody. I think oh, that's no, what's going no, on no, here. No, no it's yeah, an Apple I, thing. I, I, I'm gonna listen stick to tech plastic. support. I'm gonna listen do to zoom tech support. Plastic. It's an Apple thing. I've yeah. already gotten to the bottom of this. It's an Apple device issue. I'm working on it with. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> with, you with, with Tim with Apple. Timmy and yeah, Timmy it I are reconnoitering. It works on, it works on it FaceTime out. also. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, trying, he's trying to assume. get us off his right, podcast. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, you got to stick around all day. I'll just, just kind of slide over. If you want to make me host. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an entertaining podcast. <laughs> oh, Alice, right. we need oh. to get you your own podcast. Oh, that's really hurtful because I have two. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, and I'm fucking coming for you, okay? <laughs> I'll meet you there, Alice. Alice, you should do stand-up, I think is what he's saying. Yes. <laughs> you should consider doing that. You can say that. Oh, you know, I almost went to I'm one too of your busy modeling. Shows. I really want to go oh. to one of your stand-up shows, but apparently You're not invited. a little so. rule. That's like I'll come to San Diego because you have good stand up there and I your mom's already come out. See you know what I'm saying? No. All right. What <laughs> what? Say it that way. <laughs> came to show, didn't this know why. This is an intervention. <laughs> oh Michael. We're so sorry. Take care, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. you know that um that was a pretty big podcast for me. Uh, thank you guys for, for listening. You know, Brett and I, my son, uh, started this podcast January of 2019. And we did it. You know, I've talked about this many times on the show. We did it as a way, um, as a father and son, just to bond. You know, we, we our intention was just to talk about things or have guests on that would uh, talk about uh, shows or, or movies that we like. You know, it's just a way for us to um, to bond, and we never, never even thought about it going anywhere. We we're just kind of throwing it out there a little bit, um, and and it took off, and we're so grateful for that. And it has led to just the best stuff. And today's panel was probably the highlight that that we have had. It has been um, just a, an incredible ride. But thank you guys for tuning in. Um, the new season looks terrific. The first episode was great. I think we all really enjoy this cast and the way that they interact together. They're 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 such good actors. They're funny. The dialogue on the show is really good. Chris does a terrific uh, uh, job with it. Um, 
Jenna, I think, is a terrific writer. You know, some of some of the episodes that she's written probably uh, my favorites in the series. I she's she's uh, so talented a writer and just a funny actress. I love it when the writers jump on a show for um, kind of those secondary roles that that are just hilarious. You know, the um, uh, the office is the one I really think about where you had several characters that were main writers on the show and they would, they would jump on and just crack you up. I, I think Jenna does a, a great job with that. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, that's uh, not always easy coordinating 10, 10 of us on screen, but I, I hope we uh, did a pretty good job with that. I hope you learned a little bit, you know, uh, got a few uh, laughs. You know, I definitely did. That was, uh, that was a blast. I've, uh, I've been a fan of uh, Alan Tudyk's pretty much forever. I know most people kind of grabbed onto him when he did uh, Firefly, and and uh, obviously he was uh, terrific in that. But he's just such a talented actor as far as um, his how he emotes, you know, with uh, his expressions, his uh, you know the the uh, the tenor of his of his voice sometimes. It just just really uh, talented. Uh, so that was a highlight. Love talking with him. You know, Meredith and I have gotten uh, uh, fairly close uh, uh, through this uh, podcast. That was uh, her that helped set most of this up. You know, we've had um, Sarah and Alice have both been on the show uh, before. So definitely, if you want to go back and, and check those out, you know, the intention is to bring them back, you know, whether it's individually or as a group. You know, we'll try to do this uh, again, maybe at the end of the season so we can actually talk through um, the season. So please stay tuned. If you enjoyed that, we've got three other panel interviews that we've done. Please check those out. We did a, a Walking Dead panel. We've done a Doom Patrol panel. Um Alan wasn't on that one, but we had a great uh, group uh, uh, from that cast. And we've also done, there's a terrific little show that uh, you can still watch on Hulu. It was out for a couple of seasons called Quick Draw. Um, we have most of the main cast on from that. And it's a fun little show. If you're looking for kind of a funny Western type show, that's a good one. So Quick Draw, check that out. If you're finding us for the first time, thank you. Welcome. Uh, love that you're here and, and we could definitely use your support small town west virginia father and son team you know we're just it, it's just us that we're trying to put this uh, together so we can definitely use your support it's easy it's free you know if you if you watch um our youtube channel the meistercon pod please subscribe those subscriptions really help us out and they're free so please subscribe. I guarantee you'll have a ton of material there that, that you'll enjoy. You'll discover some people that you can kind of follow. There'll be people that you recognize that you want to uh, uh, check out Meistercon Pod on YouTube. If you're a listener, wherever you listen to your podcast from, please just to subscribe. It really helps us out. Um, our website is Meistercon.com. You can find all 740 and counting episodes, audio and video on there. If we're doing um, anything in studio for going on location, covering a convention, anything we got going on, it'll be on the website, meistercon.com. So please check us out there. And the last plug that I'll, I'll throw out there is IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named us the top 100 podcast. I can't believe it, but there we are, 15 million podcasts out there. Um, be on anybody's top 100 list is amazing, but IMDB, definitely a big one for uh, for us. You can support us that way if you go to imdb.com. Just pull up the two opinionated page, and that traffic on the page really helps us out. Thank you guys so much. I, I can't believe what a great what a great time I had. I had the best time uh, talking with uh, with everyone. You know, it's uh, it's 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 uh, fun for me to to do these. And I love them, and and those of you that that follow the podcast, you know that this has been a rough 2024, uh, for me. I went to, um, I went to Vegas for New Year's, uh, to see, um, John Oliver and Seth Myers, and I got, uh, gluten con cross-contaminated, gluten cross-contaminated, you know, I've got celiac disease, and it hit me harder than anything I've been through in the last 20 years as far as, uh, celiac. So I've been pretty, 
pretty sick um, for basically the 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 year so far. So it um, it's it's been pretty rough, and it affects my immune system. So it's caused me. I've been through two bouts of flu, and I had the shot. And it, it's just it's just been a rough couple of months. I was really worried that uh, I wasn't going to be healthy enough to to do this interview. But there was no way I was going to pass it up. <laughs> me, and, me and Meredith have been working on this one for for a while, and uh, no way I was going to miss it. So I hope I hope it didn't come across that that I was a little bit under the weather. But if it did, I apologize. When when they come back, I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm uh, close to uh, to 100. I'm getting there. Thank you guys so much. Till next time. Bye everybody.